Welcome back to Barbecue and Bottles. I'm Jared, and today we are gonna be making an absolute French bistro classic, the Steak au Poivre. That translated to English is steak with pepper. So it's essentially just a steak with one side really thick crusted with freshly cracked black pepper. So we're gonna sear up a steak in cast iron, do it au poivre method, and if you're into that kind of thing, stick with us. So to start with, we've got two New York strip steaks here. These are AAA graded steaks, so that would be the USDA equivalent of prime. And we're just gonna go in. This recipe calls for some flaky salt. So normally we're using kosher salt. This recipe, for whatever reason, they're a flaky salt kind of recipe, you know? Get that patted in, get that flipped over. Now you can do this recipe with other cuts too, like it works really well with filet mignon or even ribeyes I've seen it done. But generally you want something that's a bit more on the tender side. So New York strip ribeye filet mignon works perfect. Now that we've got our steak seasoned up with salt, what we need to do is get our black pepper ready. And for that, we're just gonna use a little plastic baggie here. I don't have a pestle and mortar. That's ideally what you'd be using. But instead, we're just gonna take lunch baggie here Pour in a bunch of peppercorns. Do that up. Now if you've got a meat mallet, that works well. We're just gonna use a rolling pin here and you're gonna wanna lightly crack these. Oh, thought that was gonna happen. So that bag's split open. So we're gonna try putting that bag inside of another one. Just keep going here. So now finally we've got our freshly cracked black pepper here. So this was obviously a lot more work than just using your pepper mill, but the reason it's an important step is you don't want to burn your pepper when it's actually searing away in the pan. So we're going to coat one of the sides of these steaks with this, and because those are coarser granules of pepper, again it's not going to burn when we're searing it off in cast iron. So we're going to come in here, just put this down right onto that black pepper. Just look at that, perfect coating. We're gonna take a few more of these granules, hit some of those empty spots. You want a really, really thick crust here, just like that. Now we'll get the second steak ready to go. Press it down into the pepper, just like that. And again, we'll take some of the extra cracked pepper here and just fill in the gaps. So now before we get searing the steaks, we're just gonna prep some of the actual ingredients for the, for the sauce that we're gonna make. So we'll start with garlic. We need six cloves, three of them are gonna be diced, and then three of them are gonna be pressed. So just smash them down, make it easier to peel. Now for three of these, we're just gonna slice them into really thin slices here. Just want these really lightly shaved. All right, now that we've got our garlic prepped, we'll get that over to the side. Now we gotta prep our shallots. So for our shallots, we need to dice these finely. So we'll cut off the top, cut it in half. This is the prep very similar to an onion. So we just need one of those large shallots. So now that we've got our shallots prepped in the garlic and our steaks, we're gonna get over there to the cast iron pan and get that thing fired up. So we're just on the side burner of the gas grill here. We're gonna get this ignited, get that fired up, get our cast iron skillet here on top. Now we're gonna heat up our cast iron skillet until we've got a surface temperature of about 450 to 500. And then that'll be the time when we're ready to get our oil in and put those steaks down in here. So we're just gonna check the temp of the pan here. We've got it reading just over 450. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an oil with a neutral flavor to it. We're going in with avocado oil, and this has a really high smoke point as well. I think the smoke point on this is about 520 Fahrenheit. If you don't have avocado oil, then canola oil will do just fine, or rapeseed oil is another good one. So we've got that layered out through the pan. 
and we're gonna get our steaks down. So you wanna start with the pepper side up first. We're gonna form that crust on the bottom before we flip. So we're at about the four minute mark here. So we're just gonna flip these over. Got a nice crust that started to form. So first we're gonna add in a bunch of butter. Then we're gonna add in the aromatics. So we've got some thyme. We're just gonna scrunch that up in our hands. Get the shallots down in here. And then that garlic. So now we're just gonna tilt this to the side here a bit so that we can baste the steaks with that butter. This is gonna help form the crust on the top of the steaks. This is just like our usual cast iron steak sear method here. Just get that bubbling oil up onto the top surface of the steak and it just helps finish the mired reaction on some of these gray pockets. We want that to turn fully brown. Scrape that goodness off and we'll do the same on the next steak. Right. So now that we've seared off both sides here, we're gonna get this transferred over to the gas grill. We're gonna finish these guys off indirect. So now we're gonna reduce the heat here to about medium to medium low. So on our gas grill, that's very low. <laughs> the, uh, the temp gauge is always cranked up high. So we're gonna go in with a third a cup here of brandy. And we're gonna get the rest of our garlic in here now. And we're gonna hit this with some rough cracked black pepper. Now, if you have green black peppercorns that have been marinating in oil, that's the proper thing to use for this recipe. They're very difficult to find, but if you can find them, go for it. Now we're just gonna remove the thyme from our sauce here. We're just gonna wanna stir this around, get that fond that developed on the bottom of the pan. Oh, one more sprig of rosemary we gotta take out. So that fond that developed on the base of the pan here. That really just released with the brandy. So we're really just simmering this until all the alcohol is actually evaporated. This smells incredible. Now if you want, you can actually light this on fire and kind of flambe it. And that'll give you, you know, when the fire goes out, you'll know you've burned off all the alcohol. That's enough. And now we're gonna go in with three quarters cups of heavy cream. We'll just mix that around. Now you're gonna to wanna to just simmer this until it evaporates down. You wanna reduce it by roughly a half or until it really starts to just thicken the back of the spoon as you stir it. And this is where that rich dark brown color comes from. The fawn from the steaks, this cream that you bring in here, again, helps remove some of that fawn just from the skillet. So that looks like it's about ready. So I'm just gonna turn off the heat. And let this just, just sit here while we finish up those steaks. So we just hit an internal of 129 on our meter temp probe. We're aiming for 130. So we're gonna start prepping our plate. And what we're gonna do is just grab a little bit of this sauce. Look how rich that gravy is. Put that down like that. Spread it across the plate. Go in with another scoop. Do that spread again. And that's gonna be the bed that we lay the steak down in. So this is the steak that's just hit 130. Get that temp probe out and get that laid down on the bed of sauce. So this is one way to plate up the steak. So you got the full steak over the bed of sauce. You can pair this with like a pile of French fries or I really like grilled asparagus. Now the other way you can plate your steak, and you can see we've had this resting here for a few minutes, is take this off and just slice into it. Cut nice and thick, chunky slices off of these strip steaks. And take that, and just lean these pieces back Get that nice, medium rare, look at that, edge to edge, wall to wall, 
can angle these. They don't have to be perfect. Kind of get them off to the side like that. And then come in with a little drizzle of sauce right over the top. Just look at that thick gravy. Really thickened up over the course of that cook. Gonna pack a ton of flavor from the garlic, the shallots, the brandy. And there you have it. Steak au poivre. Really easy, really simple. More like a French style of preparation for your steak. Something you'd find in a bistro in Paris maybe. But now there's just one thing left to do and that's go in for a taste test. Now before we do our taste test, on today's community shout out, this one goes to Jerson, who actually edits all of these videos. So Kai and I shoot them, we send them off to Jerson, he edits them up, and he actually made some kick-ass ribs. Gonna throw a picture up here on, on the screen, he followed one of our rib recipes, but he did it in the oven. And I actually think that's an important thing. If you see us doing a recipe on the smoker or one of the grills, and you don't have a grill or a smoker, you can generally follow the same time and the same temps and do those same cooks in your oven. You'll get a little less smokiness, but again, you can still follow those same steps and get a pretty similar outcome. So thanks Jerson for submitting that picture of the ribs and for editing all these videos too. So the next step, the taste test, just gonna take a slice out of the middle here. Make sure we get a load of sauce on that. Now when you bite into this, of course you're getting a lot of pepper flavor. I thought it was gonna be far more pronounced and almost to an extreme when I bit into this just based on how much uh, pepper we put on these steaks. But clearly the cook just kind of mellowed that pepper out a little bit. It's still clearly a pepper forward flavor profile. So if you don't like spicy or any heat, then probably skip this recipe. Frankly, like I don't mind this. It's a nice little switch up from the regular just beef forward steak that we tend to do, which is just salt and maybe a little bit of pepper at the end. But I can see why a bistro or a restaurant might end up using this method because that sauce packs a ton of flavor, but it does smother the actual flavor profile of the beef itself. And so I can see if you're not using a USDA Prime or a Canadian AAA steak, if you're using something that's lower grade, you might actually wanna hide up some of that quality of the underlying beef. And this sauce certainly does that. Like it's, you're tasting sauce, you're tasting garlic, the shallots, you're tasting the cream. And that's really more of the forward present profiles here than the actual underlying beef itself. And with the price of beef these days, that might actually be something that you're looking for. You know, go buy a cheaper cut of beef and then try making it with this sauce, see how it goes. If you like this video, smash that like button. If you learned something, consider subscribing to the channel for more of these videos to come. Really appreciate you spending your time here on a Saturday with us, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.